Hi everyone, hope you're well. In this session, we're looking briefly at the actions and functions of vitamin B3. Now, vitamin B3 has multiple different forms, such as nicotinamide, nicotinic acid, as well as nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide riboside chloride. And the active form in the body is NAD, which you may have read about online. It plays a significant role, like the other B vitamins, with energy metabolism. So we're starting to move from the glycolysis of vitamin B1 moving into like the electron transport chain Krebs cycle activity with B2 and again with B3 now. So we're moving into those energetic pathways. It's involved with the modulation of inflammation. So we always think about zinc, magnesium, B6 for delta 5, delta 6 perceptorase pathways like the omega-3 eicosanoid pathways, anti-inflammatories. In this case, we're looking at also the regulation of these pathways with vitamin B3. It's involved in metabolism of DNA gene expression and differentiation, so it has a link with vitamin D3, B3, D3, and cell signaling. So if we think back to vitamin B1, we looked at cell signaling, cell-to-cell -cell communication, vitamin B3 does that in a similar way. Vitamin B3 is also involved with vasodilation, so it's used a lot in regulation of circulation. It reduces oxidative stress, triglyceride levels, and lipid peroxidation, so it has a anti-inflammatory antioxidant effect particularly in the vascular system it improves liver health and it's involved in the metabolism and conversion of folate to tetrahydrofolate such as vitamin b2 that we just um, talked about so one of the main areas we're starting to see now already with the b vitamins as we've moved from b1 to b2 to b3 is that they have similar roles but they do them in different ways and that's something we need to keep in mind um, that's a good way to think about it. The dosages of vitamin B3 tend to be higher than the other B vitamins. So when you think about it, we talked about 5, 10, 15, up to 20 milligrams, for example, of B1 and B2. With B3, we tend to sort of start around 20, 25 milligrams. It could be 50 to 100. It depends on the individual person in front of you, of course. But one thing to think about is if people have too much vitamin B3, and it doesn't have to be the nicotinic acid form, they may get what you would describe as flushing of circulation. They may feel a bit warm, and that's because of its blood flow and its vasodilating effect. So keep that in mind. If you do notice that effect, taper it back a little bit or start off with lower dose, which is normally the best way to do it, and just think about anything else that's happening um, with, with this person in front of you. It's, it's quite interesting the way how vitamin B3 works in these areas. And now we're looking at the B vitamins as if working through the energy pathways, but now we have B2 and B3 working with the functionality of MTHFR, folate metabolism. When we look at vitamin B6, there'll be a similar avenue that we're looking at as well.